I'd now like to ask Shane Mortimer, Aboriginal elder, well respected, to come and say a few words. Thanks, Shane. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to honour the uh, elders past and present of the uh, Euro Nation. And uh, I'm very pleased to see everybody here today. Uh, and it's my privilege to be here. Tell me, um, how many people know the origin of the name of their capital city, Canberra? Uh, <laughs> okay. It's named after my family, the Gambri people. All right. And I represent over 400 members of my family in Canberra. And uh, it's a Walgaloo word. My language is Walgaloo. And it actually means cleavage. Basically, the women for us, it's a very nice place to come from. And uh, hang out. <laughs> it's, uh, that's the actual origin. The, the, the meeting place reference is a word called Pialago, or biology, um, which uh, is a, a completely different meaning altogether. But um, I, I have a great fondness for the arts, in particular for uh, Gordon and uh, Elaine, um, and I, an immense respect for what Gordon has uh, done with Elaine to bring this collection together. And I, I really urge you to get behind the support of this. The one thing that I've come to learn over a period of time is that Aboriginal people have our common law rights. We actually have our common law native title to this land. And it's not Aboriginal people who have been disempowered. You're the ones that don't have a say. And it's an interesting thought for you to just, just ponder that. Because we as Aboriginal people, we know where we are, we know who we are, and we know where we belong. But non-Aboriginal people are bound by they're political masters. And you're told what to do, when to do it, who to vote for, when to vote. It's a very, very different perspective. And I, I see this in Canberra because I give a lot of speeches in Canberra. I give the cultural awareness education for the Parliament House staff, National Convention Centre staff, the, the uh, National Museum of Australia. So I, I have come to realise that the boots now gradually getting on the other foot. As of the last census, Aboriginal people are 500,000 strong. And you watch the United Aboriginal Nations of Australia get together and become a force to be reckoned with. It's not that far away. The thought of an arts-led United Nations of Aboriginal Australia, right here on Sydney Harbour, is a phenomenal thought and a, and a, a great um, objective. And I believe that could happen at Goat Island. At Garden Island, I could see United Aboriginal Nations of the World Centre and get rid of a warmongering centre that's there and replace it with a peace centre and his National Peace Centre on Sydney Harbour. So these are the sorts of turnarounds that I believe that Aboriginal people can lead to make a different world a better world. You know, books like Bill Gamages, it's been recently released, The Biggest Estate on Earth, where he draws on art, the art of the early colonisers of Australia from the late 1700s and early 1800s, describing every inch of this continent and Tasmania as being like a nobleman's park, so magnificently managed, to within a blade of grass managed with fire. Incredible. And you look at the artwork that he refers to and you see what the artists have painted, and they're not painting a lie, they didn't have a propaganda agenda or a second you know, agenda going on behind them. They painted what they saw, and that's what Bill Gamage has written about. I highly commend the book to you. I have a copy in the car if anyone would like to have a look at it. But art, you know, I can show you art that's been on my family's walls for 28,000 years, carbon dated at Nalak Bankurum Bay, total rock. 
from Canberra. It stands the test of time. What Gordon has done with his painting, what Elaine has done with her photography, it just nails it for this time. And it's there for everybody. I encourage you to get behind what Gordon has done and Elaine has done. And uh, with as much gusto as you can possibly do, if you know someone who has a couple of bucks, well, tell them to kick the can and, and just drop it in, you know? And it's very important. You know, these people can't live on thin air. You know, I look at the, the advances that we've made, and, and really, as you pointed out, it's all hot air. The Mabo decision, you know, 20 years on the 3rd of June, we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Mabo decision, and what does Benita Mabo have? Nothing. Not even her own home. You know, have a think about that. That things will change. Jeff, out of adversity comes opportunity. And believe me, opportunities around the corner for Aboriginal people in this land. Happy days, everybody. Congratulations, Gordon and Elaine.